What's going on movie fans? My name is Michael Weir. I love talking about movies and today we're going to talk about the ninth entry into the Saw franchise, Spiral. Now Spiral is the first movie in the franchise that went for a total and complete reboot with a new set of characters, a completely new Jigsaw character, and a whole new setting. Whereas the first seven movies all seem to take place relatively close to each other, Jigsaw happened 10 years after the events of the original Saw movies and it was kind of a soft reboot but it pretty much carried on the legacy of John Kramer and we got a lot of him in there but Spiral would not feature John Kramer at all except for maybe a picture or two that a detective holds up thinking maybe John Kramer is back but we don't think this is possible so there's got to be a new killer and they really go toward that new killer angle in this movie. I'm getting ahead of myself for the actual review and I will get into it here in a second, but this is the last movie in the Saw franchise that I need to review before getting into Saw X. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while and you're wondering, well, Mike, didn't you already review Spiral? Well, I did, and then I watched my review for it because I was like, maybe that's good enough. Watched my review for it, rewatched Spiral yesterday, and you know what? I think I need to re-review this movie because there's different things that I see in this movie this time around, good and bad. So with all of that said, let's get into my review for Spiral. Spiral, 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 Spiral. I need everyone on this case! Spiral, 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 Spiral. He could be anywhere. He could be anyone. We're gonna tear this city apart. And so guys, Spiral is the fourth and final movie in this franchise so far that has been directed by Darren Lynn Bowsman. He directed Saw 2, 3, and 4, and then waited all those years till 2021 when he directed Spiral. And like I said in the opening of this video, the movie takes place in a different setting from the original Saw universe, where it's still in that Saw universe, but you have a whole new cast, and they bring in some heavy hitters to this new Spiral franchise that they were trying to get off the ground with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson. Chris Rock plays a police officer that once upon a time when he was a younger police officer, a rookie police officer, he saw another police officer do something wrong and he told on him, tried to do the right thing, but all that did was get him branded as a rat in the police department. And while he's never left the police department or changed precincts or anything like that, he stayed in that area. All of the fellow police officers, detectives, they all kind of look at him as a snitch. And at the same time, Samuel Jackson plays Chris Rock's father in this movie and he's also the ex-police chief of that same precinct. So there's a little bit of tension between the two of them because Samuel Jackson, while he loves his son, he's sort of like, okay, but yeah, but you screwed up when you went and broke the code of like, you know, police officers not telling on each other. So he kind of sees both sides. Plus throughout the movie, you see Samuel Jackson has a history of covering things up in the police department. While all of this is going on with them, you have the new Jigsaw Killer, who doesn't really refer to himself as the Jigsaw Killer, but he's doing Jigsaw Killer-like things. For example, in the first kill of the movie, you have a police officer with his hands tied in a subway tunnel and the subway train is coming. But before it comes, a TV starts playing and there's someone in a new pig mask and new robe and it's a completely new design to the pig mask. So again, they were rebooting the franchise and sort of showing you like, look, even the mask is different. This person's taking inspiration from Jigsaw, but it's not Jigsaw. We are we are 100% moving forward with a new Jigsaw killer in these movies. This new Jigsaw killer seems to have a vendetta against the police officers 100%. He doesn't seem to go after other people outside of the police department. He is constantly targeting people around Chris Rock within the police department, including his father. Now, with all of that said, if that sounds like a good setup for a movie in general or a spiral from the Book of Saw, which is another title that it once had, if that sounds good, you can go check this movie online. And yeah, it's not a bad idea to watch all of the movies before getting to Saw X, which I'm very excited about. So let's get into my likes and my dislikes. The first like I have for this movie is it has a real Seven vibe to it, and I never caught that before, but you know, Seven is that great detective murder mystery movie where you're trying to catch a killer. He's three steps ahead of them the entire time. You have a stacked cast in this movie with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman trying to catch Kevin Spacey's serial killer. It's such a great movie, and this movie definitely feels like it takes inspiration from that. You have Chris Rock walking around with another rookie detective, kind of the same way in Seven where Morgan Freeman was the veteran police officer, didn't want another person with him, ends up getting settled with Brad Pitt, who is the rookie police officer, and they're sort of put together. So that was cool, uh, seeing that sort of tie-in. Definitely took inspiration from Seven, something I didn't notice last time around, but this time around, I was like, wow, there's, there's a lot of inspiration there, and I think this is done really well. 
I also really liked all the traps in this movie. Like the traps in the last couple of Saw movies and then Jigsaw seemed very unrealistic. So when you get into this movie and the traps are, they most, okay, some of them are a little crazy, but they all seem more realistic this time around. And since that was a gripe I had with the last several Saw movies, I figured I would put in a light column this time around. Like I said, the movie starts with a guy who's tied above subway tracks. It doesn't really get simpler than that. You have a subway train coming at you and you have two options. You can buy Bite your tongue off and it will release your chains and you can get out of the way or you can let the thing hit you. And that's another thing, these traps are so violent. Like at another point in time, another character gets put in a trap and their only option is to sever their spinal cord and never walk again or be killed. And another option is let all of your fingers get pulled off. You'll never be able to use your hands again or be killed. And so these are so violent. Like I feel like Jigsaw, when he was putting together his traps, he was like, yeah, you... You're gonna have to cut into your eye and that's gonna suck. You'll still see out of one eye though and you'll learn a lesson or you might have to cut off a limb, but you're still gonna, this guy's like, we're gonna just maim you for life or you're gonna die. And of course, you gotta watch these traps play out because it's a Saw movie. So in this movie, people don't get out of these traps and it is gruesome watching these people go through these traps. My first big dislike for this movie is going to be the character played by Chris Rock because he is just Chris Rock as a detective. Like his opening scene is him doing stand up to a bunch of of other detectives and yeah it was funny in the moment when i saw in the theater and it was even funny now but when you look at the context of the situation it doesn't doesn't make any sense like he's just giving stand-up and then throughout the movie he injects this humor this chris rock style humor that is funny and i did laugh at it but then taking a step back i'm like this doesn't really feel like a Saw movie. Like, it feels like something completely disconnected. And maybe that's what they were going for, but you just didn't have all these jokes during the Saw franchise. Like, it, it felt like it didn't belong. And again, it's called Spiral from the Book of Saw. So it's technically detached from those other Saw movies. But because it's in the same universe and those movies were so gritty and had a dark feeling to them, there wasn't a lot of humor at all in those movies. And then you get to this movie and it's just Chris Rock throwing out one-liners after one-liners after one-liners. And then Samuel Jackson doing his thing, which leads me to my next dislike. I don't think Samuel Jackson belonged in this movie. I think they could have gotten somebody else to play an older veteran police officer and it would have done better. Samuel Jackson is a great actor, but it just didn't vibe with me in this movie for him to be his dad and their back and forth that they had. I just didn't believe it. Like I just felt like it was two actors that got thrown into the movie, even though they probably both requested to be in this movie and all of the above, and they're both great actors, but they just didn't work for me in this film. Like I think you could have had a better character play Chris Rock's dad and then maybe I would have been able to enjoy the Chris Rock character a little more. But because he's Samuel Jackson and he comes off as Samuel Jackson, between the two of them, I was just like, well, you're just being yourselves in a Saw spinoff movie. Another thing I want to point out about the Chris Rock character in this movie is when they do flashbacks for them, they give him the backwards hat treatment. Like Samuel Jackson gets a mustache to show that he's still young, but then when they do a young flashback of Chris Rock, he's in like an oversized police uniform and then he's got a backwards hat on. And I was like, oh, of course they threw the backwards hat in there. I wonder if that was on purpose, if they were having a joke with themselves and the fans of the franchise who have made jokes about Saw all these years, you know, showing John Kramer as a younger self with a backwards hat on to show how young he was so i wonder if that's why they did that but yeah chris rock wears a backwards hat to show how young he is in a flashback scene my final dislike for this movie and it's still a dislike that i had from the previous review and it's my biggest dislike for this movie it's my biggest gripe for this movie is that they go get rid of the billy the puppet character completely you've got a brand new puppet in there who's like this pig because again he's targeting cops and so he's like a pig doll but the billy the puppet character is gone and the voice, and this is where my big gripe comes in, the voice of Jigsaw in this movie, the new Jigsaw killer, is like this. Hello, detective, I would like to play a game. And I was like, what? Like even this time around, I hadn't watched this since I saw it in theaters in 21, and it was rough back then. But I watched it just now and I was like, I, I can't believe they went away from that dark, menacing John Kramer or altered, Hoffman voice you know because in the six through six and seven they did the altered Hoffman voice version of it which was still fine but Tobin Bell's voice on that recording like if they found a way to make that voice work in Spiral they should have done it but you know they with all the audio and the ability to change audio why wouldn't you do that instead they give him this high-pitched voice that does not work for me and every time I see it it makes it laughable and when you're laughing at these very deadly scenes where there's people in traps 
that's not a good sign for your movie. So the fact that Spiral came out in 2021, I understand it was pushed from COVID. It was supposed to come out in 2020, so it had those issues. It also dropped in the summer, so it just wasn't the time for a horror movie like that. It was the first Saw movie to not drop right around the Halloween season. So I completely understand that it had all those things going against it. But when you look at these dislikes that I have, it's like you put big name actors in this movie because you're like, oh, well, they'll sell. And then you let them do their thing. Like Samuel Jackson just felt like Samuel Jackson. Chris Rock was doing stand-up felt like Chris Rock. It didn't feel like a Saw movie. And so I don't know who you were trying to appeal to because if you're trying to appeal to a new audience, that fell flat. And if you're trying to appeal to fans of the greater franchise of the Saw character, that fell flat because you completely cut out the things that we love the most. Billy the Puppet Doll, you cut out the voice, you cut out the idea of why Jigsaw was doing those things. This Jigsaw character is not really trying to rehabilitate anyone. He's out for revenge. And that was so against what John Kramer was doing in all of those movies. He was trying to teach people lessons. Yeah, I know he was a murderer, blah, blah, blah. But he was trying in his mind, he was trying to change people's perspective on life. And he was trying to do things. He was going about it all messed up, but he was trying to do things to better people's lives in his own head. Whereas this Jigsaw Killer is literally just out for revenge. And it kind of reminded me of the end of Saw 8 when you have the final reveal of the new Jigsaw Killer. He's literally just doing this out of revenge and it didn't feel like John Kramer. It didn't feel like he was trying to teach a lesson. Even after that police officer confessed at the end of Saw 8, he still killed him. And so that's what this movie feels like. It just feels like even if these people were to have gone through their traps, I'm pretty sure he still would have killed them. So it didn't feel like a Saw movie. And again, I understand that the case can be made that, well, this wasn't a Saw movie. This was Spiral from the book of Saw, and it was supposed to kick off a brand new franchise of Spiral movies. But again, that was a gigantic failure because in 24 hours, a new Saw movie comes out starring Tobin Bell, and they're bringing back the era of the original Saw movies. I believe Saw X is supposed to take place between Saw 1 and Saw 2. So clearly Spiral didn't work out financially. It also didn't resonate with the fans of the franchise. And I'm a huge fan of this franchise. I even find things to like in the least of them like Spiral. But even I was like, nah, don't, don't, don't continue on. That voice is terrible. Don't continue on with this franchise. And they didn't, and I'm very glad they didn't, because now we are getting Saw X, and I'm so excited about that. And I know I've said that a bunch of times in this video, but we're 24 hours away from a movie I've been looking forward to all year. Overall, Spiral's an enjoyable movie if you're a huge Chris Rock fan or Samuel Jackson fan. After that, if you're not a huge fan of those two, I don't think you'll get a lot of enjoyment out of this. I don't think it's for the casual Saw fan. I don't think it's for the mega Saw fan. You know, you've got the traps in there that are pretty brutal. That was in my like category. So if you're a Saw fan, you'll enjoy those. But outside of that, it's just the setup is weird. I don't like the new way they went with this franchise. And I'm glad they did not continue making Spiral movies after this. But those are just my opinions because that's my review for Spiral. Guys, have you seen Spiral? If you have, let me know in the comment section down below what you think of it. Did you like it? Do you agree with me? Or do you think you got something completely different out of it? I'd love to know your thoughts. And finally, guys, as always, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the video, it helps the channel, and it helps me right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, we got to the end of my spiral review. And just like we've done in all of the previous Saw reviews, it's time to talk about my favorite trap in this movie. And it's got to be the finger trap. I don't I don't know what else to call it. It's the finger trap. This police officer has all of his fingers in like this netting that's connected to chains. And then they're being yanked off and he has to let it happen. And if he does that, he'll be released and he can get out of this standing water that he's in. But if he doesn't get released, the standing water is eventually going to hit a cord that is going to ignite into like this electric nightmare for him. So he's getting his fingers pulled off and it's just gruesome. It's my favorite in this movie because I think it feels the hardest to get out of. Like, don't get me wrong, at the beginning you have a guy biting his tongue off and that's pretty rough. But like he just jumps down at a certain point and it rips out of his mouth it it's gross but okay but like in this you gotta like let your fingers get pulled off completely and i just that would be a difficult trap for anybody so i really like that in this movie and that's my favorite trap in spiral with all that said though guys if you enjoyed this franchise i appreciate you guys going along with me on the ride if you haven't watched them yet you could check out my saw franchise review series right there or you can check out any of my 2023 reviews right there